Hi, everyone. Uh, it's Seth and James. This is Stars in the House. Everyone keeps complimenting that bookshelf. We did not do it. That's our daughter, and she basically did it to get a video on TikTok. So it's not, it wasn't even like for altruistic reasons. She just like did it to yourself, like did a fast forward version, and now like she has like more followers. Yeah. And um, yet we've never had more compliments for our bookshelf. Yeah. Something we've never done. I much don't rather, know where it, anything is, but of, it looks good. Instead of color coordinating, please do the dishes. <laughs> anyway, um, talk about that later. All right. So welcome to Starts in the House show number, maybe like 115 or something. I, I, I'm, Something like that. We're on like 115 shows. We began this when Broadway shut down, right. but we ain't just Broadway. As you'll find out tonight, we are um, TV and film as well. That's this great. is a fun reason. Well, first of all, we just do this so people around the world watch. We are live. We are literally live right now. And um, we hope that people just watch wherever you are and people watch all over the world. Like literally no matter what the time is. Cause it's like people watching like like 12 hours. Anyway. Yeah, there's the excitement late. of watching it live. Um, but we're also doing it to please God get some donations for the Actress Fund which is only for working Broadway actors. <laughs> people, not it drives me crazy because people listen. don't know what it is. Please describe what the Actors Fund is. It the, makes me crazy. The Actors Fund is an organization that helps anyone in the performing arts, professionals in the performing arts, with pay, paying the most like basic of needs. We're talking about rent, utilities, food, health insurance Benefits. premiums, medical bills, that sort of thing. And from coast to coast, everywhere in between LA not and New just, York, not just LA and New York. And it's not just actors and it's not, it's not famous people. We're talking about your dance studios, your vocal studios, casting directors, concessionaires, ushers, people in dance companies, opera companies, symphonies. It's like, it covers musicians. It covers actors behind the scenes, in front of the scenes, anything that is the performing arts is the Actors Fund and who they help. And what's been great, we've had people on the show, just even recently, one of the stars of The Flash was talking about right before she got The Flash, she couldn't pay her lighting bill. Right. She went to the Actors Fund, she's like, I literally cannot pay my lighting bill. They're like, well, how much is it? She was like, $400. They were like, here you go. I mean, they literally right. just give you cash. And it's, and they're giving you, they're giving the cash at you as you're donating. So keep up the donations, starshouse.com, nobody is working. So, and people really live check to check in the arts. So people need to pay their rent, their medical bills, People don't have enough weeks for health insurance when you're equity, you have to have a certain amount of weeks. Or SAG after, or, yeah. any, or any of the unions of people who do hair, makeup, all of that stuff. There, you know, a lot of it has to do with how many hours or how many weeks that you work. And right now there basically is no work. Yeah, and people need health insurance. So listen, here's what to do. So you're gonna donate at starsinthehouse.com, please. As soon as you donate, you're gonna get a receipt. Forward that receipt to Stars in the House 2020 at gmail.com. And then I'm gonna send it to one of the desperate house husbands and they're gonna read it, Jerry Lewis telethon style, like so-and-so from so-and-so just donated. So as soon as you donate, it starts in the house, forward that receipt, starts in the house 2020 at Gmail, and then I'll send it to one of the house husbands. Doug Savant already has his readers on. So he is He's prepared. ready to go. He is ready to go <laughs> to read any donation. <laughs> <laughs> how to out him so he is prepared <laughs> and they're bifocals i think at this age let's oh be my honest. gosh Sorry. now by the way people really are watching all over the world oh <laughs> yes doug i can see you just gave a certain he knows. not cool um anyway it's 2 a.m in italy right now you gotta cut i'm a desperate housewife so much we all do i'm so excited about this so we have that we have the ladies oh on. my gosh you know what can before we go there yeah can I just well first off we're up to three hundred and thirteen thousand four hundred and sixty dollars raised for the actors fund Yep. Which so we just began like ten weeks ago. Yeah. So let's let's go there. But then going to Desperate Housewives, there's so as much as we love the show, and it was one of the few shows that we've all you know, we've seen as a whole family. Um, it's so one of those things. Like, I wonder how much I remember from the first season, and is it possible while we're in this crazy time to, for us to go everything. back and rewatch? You know what I mean? It's like yeah. yeah so no spoilers. Such the, I know. It's like how do we tell? People that are watching who haven't seen it, they're like gonna forget. Alert. they're gonna. Well, I know I forget, so there you go. So don't worry about it. So if you haven't seen the show, I guess don't watch anymore. No, you have to watch it. <laughs> um, wait, we're already getting a private chat. Is that Doug giving me the finger? Wow. Okay, cut. Anyway, here we go. So I'm gonna bring on the clowns. Actually, right now. you know what? Because there is a private chat on here. Any of the guys who we can send your um, send donations to. Put your number there. I yeah. promise it's not going to be broadcast. Yeah, it's private. But then we can read it, and then when we then get, get the it. donations, I can send. Yeah, okay. So um, here, the last thing I want to say, oh, yeah. we can only fit five people on this screen. So we have to divide some of the desperate house husbands. So we decided to save the crazy for last. So <laughs> so a certain a certain murderer who denied doing it, even though he like did it in like the third episode, he's going to be on in the second half. So you'll see the other house husbands, and then we'll bring on a certain scary, right. scary. And in between, we'll have Dr. John LaPook, yeah. uh, who's the chief medical correspondent for CBS News, who will be here to give us. We haven't seen him in a few days. There have actually been quite a few updates. Yeah, so here's Mark um, Moses. Mark is waiting patiently. Mark, 
Okay, so you're waiting. Don't murder me. Okay, so we'll see you in the second <laughs> half. God, I've done some mean things. All right, uh, let us please welcome our desperate house husbands. First, literal husbands. Let's welcome. Here's Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Oh, I love your lighting, your color scheme. Know, we're so wow. Jealous. And thank you, Tuck, who has the cutest first name out of anybody here. I totally support it. Hi, Tuck. My TV husband is wearing earrings. He's wearing dangling <laughs> ears. <laughs> to hear you better, dear. To hear you better. Okay. And you, then, you always say I don't listen. <laughs> then let's welcome Ricardo. Hi, hey, Ricardo. Hi, Ricardo. Carlos. Hey. And then from all the way down south, originally, Mr. James Denton. Hi, James. I need Kevin's decorator. <laughs> <laughs> and Ricardo's mustache. <laughs> is that real? We or is all that need Ricardo's mustache? mustache. Oh, that's real. That's real. Still got it. He's a cop. Only, that, only, that only took two days. He's a and cop during COVID. Two and a half. Two and a half. <laughs> a pandemic stash. Yeah. And finally, double finger, Doug Savant himself. <laughs> uh, yes. Hi, Doug. Oh. So we had Doug here already. Doug was at the, the Melrose Place reunion. Just saying. And yeah. now this is his second hit TV show. He's got it going on. Um, all right, boys, we all need to know. By the way, Kevin is the instigator of this reunion. So, Kevin, thank so you. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you so Ricardo, much. Ricardo called me and said, hey, let's do something. Not true. Ricardo? Ricardo, we didn't know that. That's so sweet. Uh, you know, I just, uh, I, I had seen that the women had done one, and I was like, you know, I really think I should do one because we all really got along. Like, yeah, we, we, we had guys. We're all, we had a we're great all the women. Were all of the women there? Um, yeah. not all of them make it. Let's just say that. <laughs> it's a lot of laughing, James. Oh, wait, wait, before we forget, don't forget on this platform. If anyone talks at the same time, all the sound stops. So, like, if you want to talk, just sort of like take a deep inhale. If not, not yeah, or, a, or raise your hands. Yes. That's right. <laughs> or nod sagely. Um, okay, but you know yes, what? Though, to, to your point, what, I was trying to find clips and looking looking online, and I think I saw an interview with Doug, James, and Ricardo on the View. It was the last season, and and I was telling Seth, it was like you guys you could see how much you liked each other. Yeah. You can't make that up. It was just like, and James, you were so sweet with with both of them, and like you know, just no, I mean, just like you know, just like a nice guy. It was like, wow, it must have been fun. Uh, <laughs> I love those guys. I love them. <laughs> we we had to we had to pay Doug to like us though. Oh wow, <laughs> wow! What is that? I don't even Woo. know. I don't even know. Was that street car? Car? But but that he has it framed is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is it a, is it a still or is it from the boys' dressing room? What is it? That's a, that's when. Uh, Ricardo, I believe, was playing basketball in the driveway of Delfino's house. Oh my God. He was living there, right? Yeah. So, so Jamie yeah, got a screen grab. From the show. That's a still from the that's a screen cap from the show. Wow. That's awesome. Wow. Did you my frame God. bridge that? Oh, are you kidding me? Look, it's just a piece of paper stuck to a frame. Oh. <laughs> you're, in a frame baby. You're, you're insulting me. I thought you had that framed. I was gonna no, it's covering up Bobby Kennedy. <laughs> oh, I'm it. All right, let's go back to the beginning. That was good. I'd love to know how, how all you clowns got your role. So, Kevin, how'd you get the gig? Um, I auditioned. I we, Tuck and I, when we auditioned, it was the characters were the new couple on the street. And I don't know what Tuck was told, but I was told it was maybe three episodes. And um, and I remember the day the day I auditioned, I was actually doing an episode of Scrubs. And I was in a bald cap and like I had till let's say five o'clock to get to Universal and they cut me at 430 and then they had to take the bald cap off and I raced over there and my now wife was with me and um, they wouldn't let her on the lot. They were like, she can't come in. I'm like, she doesn't care about any of this. I'm not <laughs> making her sit on the curb while I go audition for this job I don't really want. <laughs> um, at the, and I like, I don't, I like, what are you doing? And they're like, they're like, she can't come in. And I'm like, well, then I'm not auditioning. Let's, I, let's go. Screw it. And my wife, my now wife was like, no, I'll stand, I'll stand here on the curb. Um, and you go in and audition. And so I walked in hot. Like I was, I was pissed when I walked into that audition and I actually read for Tuck's role and I read and just bitchy. 
And, and Mark Cherry goes, did you look at the other one? I go, yeah, he's funnier. And they go, why don't you, why don't you, uh, why don't you look at that? I go, just give me five minutes. I'll be fine. And I went out, I did five, looked at it for five minutes. I went in and just was bitchy. And I think that's how I got the job is because I was so pissed at the gate guard. Oh, wow. <laughs> Your hostility paid off. That's right. Tough. What about two, you? Five years later, we were, we were still there. They couldn't get rid of us. Uh, wow. Well, you were Kevin, Kevin read for the funnier one. I read for the taller one. <laughs> <laughs> I was only right for the taller one. I, I was told that I would, uh, I, I was, I was so loved. I was immediately going to be a series regular, but Kevin was just going to have three episodes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but when I read, I read with two different actors for, for, for the role of Lee and I read with one guy and I was terrible and I read with Kevin and I was good. So I think Kevin brought something out of me and, and that kind of worked. So I think maybe that's why they, they put us together. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. Thanks, Kevin. Kevin. Tuck, was there like a body clause in your contract that you had to like do a certain amount of push-ups every day? <laughs> no, and to be perfectly honest, I remember saying to Mark at one point, because I kept having to wear bathrobes, which I find to be so <laughs> emasculating. I said, I said, Mark, if you're going to have me take my shirt off, can we do it like this season before things start to fall apart? And they, <laughs> I don't, they never, they never did. I, I kept preparing myself for it. Like, <laughs> Benny's doing it. Ricardo's doing it. I'll, I, I'm ready. And uh, they're like, no, just wear the bathrobe, Tuck. Put on the bathrobe. <laughs> what a way. <laughs> no, it was, it was the Halloween episode. You were you were the you had you were torso you had this the vest on. Yeah, I got to wear eyeliner. It was wonderful. <laughs> yeah, where I looked like a weird Salvador Dali pirate. Right, right. Yeah, I was a genie. Yeah. And and you were people had were conjecturing whether you were a pirate or Salvador Dali. Salvador Dali was more interesting and more specific. I, that's, I went with Salvador Dali. Yeah. Yeah, we still uh, yeah, we still haven't kissed. When did we kiss? Uh, I think when we got married, which was anticlimactic. You had that big <laughs> breakup. I found this scene where uh, where you sort of reconcile by being mean to each other. I think this is it. Once I stopped laughing, I actually felt bad for you. We only broke up four months ago. How did you gain this much weight? <gasps> and you've been miserable without Bob. That's why you're getting so fat. <laughs> oh, wow. Is that my voice? <laughs> Very sweet. All right, Mr. Ricardo, how did you get the gig? Wow. Um, I had just gotten back to LA from uh, doing a stint at the Seattle Rep. And uh, so there it was like pilot season was full on. And a buddy of mine came by to visit me and he was wearing a suit. And it's like he just went in for like, crackhead role. So I was like, what role did you not get um, wearing a suit? And he was like, ah, it's this thing. And he shows me the side. He's like, actually, you're perfect for it. And I read it and I was like, this guy's kind of an asshole. And, um, and exactly. And, yeah, you're perfect for it. And <laughs> so I was like, all right. So I called my rep and uh, the casting office at the time, it was Scott Jenkinger, who was working with Junior Larry Johnson. Scott had given me my SAG card, had tapped heart league me into mm-hmm and was like, oh my God, I love Ricardo. I think he's wonderful. I just don't think that he's suave enough for this role. And I was like, oh, really? Okay. So I said, give me the audition. And um, and they did. And it was on a Saturday morning at 1030, which in those days was like the kiss of death. It's like the auditions were Monday through Friday. Anything on a Saturday, you're lucky if they even showed up. And fortunately, it was Mark Cherry. And Mark Cherry was there in the room because he probably had nothing else to do on a Saturday. Uh, as Mark would probably be. And so I went in and Junie Larry Johnson was there as was Scott Jenkins. And that was pretty much it. I think I was the last person that they saw too. For the role. You didn't have to do like a chemistry read with Eva? Eva? No, no. Wow. He was that suave. I was. <laughs> yeah. And what about you, Mr. Denton? I was lucky. I was on a show the year before called Threat Matrix. It was a, it was 2002, so it was the first television show about terrorism. 
And we caught a lot of grief about we were we were capitalizing on people's fears of terrorism, and there should be a TV show about it. And of course, after that, there were about fifteen. Um, right. But uh, the showrunner, uh, one of our showrunners there, Michael Edelstein, who I owe a lot to, um, took over and uh, went over to Desperate Housewives and brought a lot of our crew with him. And, I, and Michael, I think, went to Mark and said, you know, that told him I show up sober and I know my lines. And, um, <laughs> and I, was really fortunate. I went in and read for Mark. Mark Cherry, all Mark Cherry said was, can you be more Italian? Because of Michael, you know? <laughs> and I was like, no, not really. I, I, this is all I got. So Mike, Michael Edelstein, actually, who worked on our show for a year and then went on to uh, bigger and better things. But uh, yeah, I, I got it because of an ABC show I was on the year before, I think. So you just had to read for Mark. That was it. I came in, yeah, uh, Michael was there, and I came in and read for Mark and did not read with Terry. And I thought that was interesting that we didn't read with the women. Uh, but I didn't meet Terry until the uh, first table read of the pilot. And there was no, wow. like, um, and there was no, um, you know, what's it called? We have to go to network and do all that kind of crap? Well, yes, after after I met with Mark, had to approve, and then we went and did a network test. But it was um, the most painless I ever had because they knew me. I'd worked for ABC for a long time. I did two pilots that didn't go. I did a show called Philly, a Botchko show that I was regular on. So ABC was familiar with me. So I think I might have been the only guy they tested. I'm not sure, but I I was I was very lucky. Wow. And Savant, what about you? You got out of the pool of Melrose Place and. <laughs> I, I, I wasn't so lucky. Uh, no, I, I went in five years as the gay character on Melrose Place. Mark Cherry has no idea who the hell I am. He's just, he knows he knows that I'm married to Laura Layton, who he remembered from the Young Americans. And he, so the first thing when I met him was he said, I wrote the first thing your wife ever did. And I said, okay, great. And honestly, he told me later, I got the job because they, he'd never seen, but he's like, yeah, he's from Melrose Place. Maybe people will know him. And our director, who was British on the pilot, what I've, who guys help me out? What was his name? Uh, Jamie Ricardo. Charles, Charles McDougal. Yeah, Charles McDougal. That's right. Said, yeah, I want to get Savant because I'm making it. I want it to look all American, and he's all American. And by the way, they thought they were getting rid of me anyway. They, the, I was the only husband that wasn't a series regular on series one on year one. I was a guest. Yeah, you were. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I had to earn. I had to earn my. I had to earn my way on. I and uh, so yeah. No, I spent the you entire did. Year, you did the entire first season um, as as a guest because ABC was so generous when they went came back and said we're going and we'd like to use you, Savant. We'd give you like six episodes. You just make top a show, and I was like, well, could I just make maybe a little more? I'll, I'll, I do it, and it just got to a point where Mark Cherry finally stepped in and said. Doug, I hear you're not doing our show because I had turned it down. And I said, no, they've made it awful. And he said, well, he said, well, I, I'll put an end to that. And so he actually negotiated with me. And I said, listen, I don't care. I'll do your show for you. I understand it's not a hit. It's nobody knows if we're making money. I'll do it as a guest. But here's my condition. <laughs> if I if I do the show for the first year as a guest, whether you kill me or not, if the show goes to year two, you have to make me a series regular. And he said, oh, I can do that. And I said, well, let's do that. He said, let me just go talk. To and then he came back and he said, Doug, they told me we never do that. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, what am I supposed to do? You're, you're crying poor and I would like to make a living and you want me to commit to the show. And he said, I tell you what, I give you my word as a Christian man. That <laughs> if, if the show goes to your food, <laughs> Wait, how did wait wait when did he, when did he become oh, southern? Out of their chair. Oh, you're in Oklahoma. Your information is all over the map. What's that? My what phone accent phone. are you doing? <laughs> Mine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm not, now now I'm doing Paul Lynn. I don't know. I don't what? know. <laughs> Nelson Riley. Uh, but uh, um, at any rate, he, at, in Mark, true to his word, God bless him. At the end of season two, I became a series regular, or but at the beginning of season two, I became a series regular. Yep. But just so you know, you, your Mark Cherry is basically Darth and Michaels and Tootsie. It's a very southern <laughs> It's a gentle lady. Okay. Yeah. He's, from Oklahoma. He's from Oklahoma. <laughs> just want to clarify that. Okay, so wait, I have a clip of, speaking of Doug, I have a little Carlos oh. and a little Doug that James found. I think this is it. Oh, great. Laughing? 
No, that's the good shit. That was it. That was it. That was it. That's the other couple. That's all the clip we have. Lord's Kevin. Your beautiful niece working for your ex-lover. What? You still have the hots for him. But don't deny it. I saw you. <gasps> really? You're divorced? I'm calling sick. Kids get snow days. We could call it a boob day. Okay, it is way too early for the don't touch me look. <laughs> 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 okay, before we go to our medical correspondent, um, which we're going to have in a minute, James and I would like to know what the week was like. Would you guys do table reads at the beginning of the week? Was it like a play? <laughs> we tried. Oh. It was hard to get everybody there. They they tried to do table reads, and we would do them sometimes in early morning and sometimes at lunch, but the scripts were pretty late coming. And then you guys remember there was a, a period there where we only got the pages we were in because they were so protective of the story. No, 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 no. no, no, no. Not disclosure agreements. We didn't even get to see the scripts. Whoa, 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 whoa. There were times when we sat down at the table read and you flip. We, there were scenes that were already shot by the time we got to the table. Read. True. And then we're sitting there and you're flipping the page and all it says, it's a blank page with DBW for three or four pages. And the scene shot right after we finished the table read. That was crazy. <laughs> so it was, an, it was a version of a table read, but it was basically after the episode aired. <laughs> Not bad. So, but we're we're okay, still we're doing on. table reads. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try an experiment. I'm going to try to bring Mark on, and we'll go off for a minute. So, Mark, I'm going to bring you on. <laughs> well, because you only have six. So, Mark, you tell your story about how you got the gig. And if anyone gets out of control, we're coming back. Okay, so we're going to go. Mark, <laughs> on. Come on, Mark. Oh, oh. Mark, <laughs> we're still going to all of you. <laughs> How'd you get the gig, Mark? Yeah, how'd you get how the gig? Did I get the gig? Uh, you know, it was the old Hollywood way. You know, um, <laughs> I met Mark Cherry years before, years before when he was writing for the Golden Girls. And I did his spec script on the Golden Girls, which I think was one of his first jobs. And then I think he became a runner of the Golden Girls show. And then he did another show called The Crew. And he thought I was a lucky charm. So he brought me on for that. And I did the pilot for that. And then I ended up doing some shows with Beth Broderick on Five B Mrs. Buchanan's. So we'd worked together three times and he forgot about me at casting with all the husbands. And then at the end, Paul Young was brought in and he remembered me. So that's how I got it. <laughs> Who looks like a murderer? <laughs> <laughs> you do, right. Before that, I, Moses. before that, I played charming guys. And then it was, you know, one for the role. Hold on, I want to ask a question. So wait, so Mark, even yeah. though you were like a terrifying murderer, you were a regular from the very beginning on the show, but Sweet Sweet Doug was basically like <laughs> an extra. Yeah, that's right. He was an extra, but a but a very a very well trained extra, <laughs> and and still am. <laughs> Solid under five. Um, yeah. Hey, by the way, we're getting donations. I want to keep reminding people. I'm loving it. Email those donate once you get the receipt of the donations. Don't be lazy. Yes, forward those. <laughs> to um, starsnaps2020 at gmail.com. I'm collecting them right now. So starsnaps2020 at gmail. And then one of these clowns is going to read it. Okay, so let's take, a, let's take a little medical break. So boys, we're putting you on a pause. We're going to bring on Dr. John LaPook. So right. peace out. Okay, we'll so see you in a minute. Mark, we'll bring you back. Of course, Doug, Doug we're we'll going to bring your that. ass back. Um, Mr. Denton, peace out. Ricardo, my dear. Kevin, the organizer. And then, hi, Dr. John LaPook. Hola, how are you? Very good. I, it's it's been a while since we've seen you, and we know from the little of the news that I've had time to read that there has been quite a few updates. Yes. So today there was a big trial out in a medical journal called JAMA. They looked at 96,000 people who had taken various combinations of – who were hospitalized with COVID-19, various combinations, either a control group or um, hydroxychloroquine alone or in combination with Zithromax or – you know, chloroquine alone or with Zithromax. And the bottom line was um, there's no suggestion that uh, it didn't seem to help. And people even seemed to do worse. Uh, and they had more uh, heart irregularities. Um, little asterisk here, it was, it was what's called an observational study. So there can be some what's called confounding factors. So the, the gold study is you do the randomized controlled study 
with the placebo and half of the people say get the get placebo and half get the drug or the combination drug and nobody knows what they're getting and then you see you know you see what happens so this isn't a perfect trial um it's it, they they the authors say that we need to have a randomized trial but you know we've heard a lot about people using hydroxychloroquine uh in various combinations with other meds and uh this is another a uh, big study that says uh, it doesn't look like from this, it's not supporting its use. So um, we've said it over and over again, you need to embrace science, you've got to do the, the studies. Uh, and so that re remains uh, something to be uh, to be studied further. This morning, I was on CBS this morning, uh, answering a couple of questions, which I know our viewers from uh, Stars in the House are going to want to know because it has to do with, uh, we, we were answering viewer questions about uh, opening up the country. So one was, very, very specific. When you're in a swimming pool, does chlorine kill uh, the virus? And it does. I called the CDC yesterday and they confirmed. But here's the thing about when you're in a swimming pool. If you're in a pool by yourself and it's got chlorine in it, fine. But it's the whole thing of you go to the pool and, and who do you meet on the way there and who's at the parking lot and maybe there's a wet bar and you sit next to somebody. And I guess theoretically, if you're really close in a lane and you swim by somebody and you go like this and go and then right. just as the other person's going you know but that the, the you could get an infection there but that that's kind of unlikely i think the big thing is who you're with which brought us to the other question which was uh some govern some states are saying you it's okay to go out in groups of uh two to ten and the question was how safe is that right. and the answer to that i think is again you have to think about who you are, where you are, and then what's the underlying uh, incubation period. So remember, incubation period is two to 14 two days. Four days. Right, which means, let's say you just to go out and you're with one person. You're not only just with that one person, you're with everybody that one person's been with in the last right. 14 days because that's one big viral potential exposure. That person may be incubating the virus and be perfectly seem fine, but be shedding virus and contaminating you. And now, not have any fever. And have no fever, have no symptoms. Yeah. And it's turning out that a big percentage of people um, never had symptoms. It could be 35%. You know, these numbers keep changing. And now if you multiply that by 10 or 12, uh, you know, up to 12 people or up to 10 people, now you're talking about a lot of people. So you want to know next, where are you in the country? Are you in a place where there's a lot of virus, a little virus? And that's a factor. So remember, you can go online, you, you type in, in Google, you type in COVID-19 COVID space, wherever you are, and you can drill down and see the map. And then the last thing is, who are you? Are you somebody who's vulnerable? Are you older? Do you have an underlying disease? Uh, are you obese, diabetes, hypertension, things like that can make you um, at increased risk. So th there's no answer as we go. There's no concrete one size fits all answer as we're trying to open up the country. But I am very worried that we're going to see spikes because I've been doing the deep dive on the various areas. And there are parts of the country where it is definitely not, not, not even leveled off. It's going up. Some places leveled off, but not going down. And yet they're being opened up and we're seeing people uh, cavalier uh, and not using the masks and everything else. Remember folks, if you do go out, that doesn't mean you're immune. You have to still do the mask, still do the right. six feet, still do all that stuff. So we're going to say that over and over again because people keep forgetting it. But most important thing is don't touch your face and wash your hands. Don't touch your face. Wash your hands. What's going on in your life? Are you guys starting to get stir crazy? You've been holed up for a few months now? <laughs> um, you know what? It's so much work to do these shows two times a day. We're just Focus on this constantly. We just always, we always feel unprepared for the next show. I said it's like having a, like an AP bio test and like I totally forgot to study like every day. It's like, oh my God, it's places. So not really start crazy. We're just in a panic. You're having anxiety dreams about like, oh my God, I, I, I don't know how, I didn't study for the final and I went. On, a, on occasion, it helps like with Desperate Housewives we've seen every episode. Yeah, that's easy. Cause like so we're the, obsessed and, with So these show. are all like friends. So this is like, an, this is an easy one to yes. do. But guys, this has kind of exploded. This started as this little German idea. It's like the the apple, the you know, in a Jack and the Beanstalk. You put the little bean in, and now it's like this. Yeah. Well. 
it's so many people are involved in the generosity of the artistic community. It really continues right. to flow. And the generosity of our viewers that keep donating. We're over $300,000. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's really incredible. Um, well, thank you, Dr. Book, for always making yourself available. We'll see you tomorrow. I've got a ton of questions, but we'll save them for tomorrow yeah. if you're able to join us. That'd be yes. great. Cheetah Rivera yeah. tomorrow. So we'll see you then. Of course. All right. Bye, Dr. LaPook. We love you. Um, okay. By the way, someone just asked how to donate. It's it's streaming right there. You donated stars in the house. Dot com and then you just forward. Um, okay, all right. I got to bring back these clowns, bring back the guys. Okay, so we've not had enough Mark Moses, scary, scary Mark Moses. So let me bring Mark on. I'll bring on this clown. <laughs> well, that was like really good. We've like, all decided we're going to do shots of chlorine while watching. I've been feeling great. I've been feeling great. Do do a shot of this a day. Uh, what is with you guys? Are you clowns? And sent. Okay, so so that leads to the obvious question: Did you guys do any pranks on one another during the show? Yes, any pranks? That's a good question. Yeah. Hey. We made each other. We made each other laugh a lot, but I I, I don't I don't know if you call it pranks. It wasn't like Kevin. planned out. Kevin, do you remember that scene when you came out of the house and you had the towel, your hair wrapped in the towel like a turban? And you're a fire, a fire extinguisher, and I kissed you on the mouth for no reason. Yes, yes, yes. I didn't make the there show, was, but it was fun. Interesting. There was a there was a lot of there was a lot of milk kissing off Jamie, camera. Jamie kissed but, everyone. <laughs> kissed I everyone. thought I was special. I went, no, to, I went to prison, you but I can't talk about it. And then Mark and I were in prison together, and then things happened there. Prisoners of love, blue skies above. <laughs> we have all that. What was that? How long are we in prison? Like three episodes? At least. It seemed it seemed like eternity. I remember <laughs> throwing each other up against a fence and trying to be all macho. Yeah, yeah. I was I, I'd set you up something or I don't know. Right, I'd set up, I was a hero, but I was just a liar again. Well, you killed somebody with a blender. What do you expect? <laughs> Oh wait, James, you also killed somebody, so shut up. Well, I, I killed for a good reason. <laughs> uh, he, was yeah. he was a cop killer, but it was a dirty cop. You know, you always That's fair. Out. everything Delfino did to keep Susan's character clean, they made it justifiable, which I kind of benefited from. Yeah. Mark, you had you had to deal with Harriet Harris, and worse, Harriet Harris said you had to deal with her in this horrible wig. Oh. So let's just take a gander. She was like, why did they choose that wig for me? It basically <laughs> looks like someone just found like in a haircut store, like all the hair on the floor and just glued <laughs> it, glued it to her hair. Here, let's take well, a gander. Yeah, it was Christine Ebersol's old oh, wig. What'd you yeah. say? It was Christine Ebersol's old wig. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Listen to me, you son of a bitch. I don't care what I have to do. I will see you behind bars again or dead, whichever is easier. Here's another pointer. They always record the conversation, so be careful about threatening the man you framed. You murdered my sister. <laughs> That's a crazy groundless accusation. But true. <laughs> but true. <laughs> yes. And wow. I a rug too. Harry, Harry was fantastic. I mean, right. I got to that little story, right. little storyline with her toward the end, where she and Delfino were conspiring about something. But that was the best. One of the best things about that show was all the guest stars we had. I mean, people like you know Bob Newhart and Carol Burnett and Valerie Harper and Ryan O'Neill, and I mean, just right. Right. and then and God bless Orson Bean, right? Orson uh, Bean. Cheers. Yeah. Did they come on the show because they were fans? I think I, I, I really think that. <laughs> yeah, Patrick, you're so no, smart. Mark, they came on the show because Mark Cherry was a, the fan, a fan of theirs. I mean, Mark. Yes. Mark has a, a love and abiding love for these actors and actresses, and so he he brought them on, and it was really all Mark's doing. Dixie Carter. Right. Dixie, yeah. Dixie Carter, Carter, yeah. A lot of, a lot of actors from the theater. A lot of actors from the theater. Some directors from the theater. Scott Ellis, yeah. First jobs, you know, got their first jobs on Desperate Housewives. Did you yeah. guys know that every episode was named after a Stephen Sondheim song? Year one, at least, yeah. Year one. Year one. Only year one? 
it went further than that, didn't it? Every, went on. I think every single episode was, I think you guys just got bored and, and stopped looking. But I think it was literally <laughs> every single episode was in a yeah. Sondheim song. Yeah, wait a minute. Did you guys ever watch the show? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, I was I was a, a I was a Tuck and I talked about this. I was a fan of the show before I we because we came in season four. I think oh, that, it was after they put the kid in the cage, that. and that's when it got a little weird. <laughs> um, they put they put the African American kid in the cage, and that's when I was oh, like, that? "Ooh, that's now that's we've moved on." I was not a fan of the show. I had a boyfriend. <laughs> I had a boyfriend who loved the show. And I would always make fun of him for watching that stupid <laughs> soap opera. And I, I had an audition for it. And I, 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 I really like the show. Thank you. <laughs> what an ass kisser. Hey, Kevin, here's, yeah, some, right. here's some of your bitchery. Mm. And I take back everything I said about you being an insensitive bitch. Uh, you never said that. Don't open your email. <laughs> they i had so much fun it was so much fun playing lee oh my gosh just the just the bitchiest things possible yes. to say and got and got away with it lee, and repeatedly. that's william barney fife and bob was andy griffith and lee would say funny things and then i would stand behind him like andy griffith and go now barn <laughs> <laughs> Enough of that. Uh, <laughs> if Andy and Barney were lovers, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> send weren't they? Some donations, but in the meantime, weren't they? Weren't they? Come on, come on. What is there's a reason? There's a reason he didn't have to carry a gun. <laughs> Ooh. When the, the series jumped, how many years was that? Like it jumped, what four or five? Year five years, five, five years. years. It's when they fired all of my children. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's true. You were the that you were the ones that like. Well, yeah. And then Ricardo, Carlos, uh, and Gabriella had kids all of a sudden, and they didn't have. And, them. And there, there was a there was a five year jump that happened, and basically all the kids became teenagers or were grown up in college. Yeah. Right. How long Did you know that ahead of time, like before, when the previous season had ended, how the next season would begin? Or you just showed up on day one of the next season and were like, oh, wow, this is interesting. I mean, hey, sometimes sometimes you get a little bit of information about what was going to happen. Other times you would show up and, and there would be, you know, this is what's going to be happening for the arc of the season for you or the arc of the next six episodes. It would just depend. You they know, and I think a lot. Go they ahead, gave, Jim. They gave us a heads up. I remember because uh, Mike and Susan had just finally gotten married and they had no idea what to do with us. And one of the factors in the five year jump, one of the minor ones, was, was they could have a, we got divorced in the interim. <laughs> and so they could get us married again. So that, I, remember Mark, I remember Mark calling us in, Terry and me in, and talking about how when we get back, you will be split up. So we knew a little bit about what was going to happen. But I think it just gave them a chance to reset everybody. And bring in some new characters. At first, I thought it was ridiculous, and then I realized it was the, it was pretty smart. It was smart. Hey, James, um, I just sent you um, some donations. Take a look at your phone and try to read them. Try to just be a little bit more Italian, please. Uh, <laughs> what did you send me? Um, donations. I, I think it's your number. Please go. Uh, yeah, it is. yeah, it is my number. Okay. And when I'm reading these. Yeah, read the names where they're from. What they're talking about. The Godfather. Yes, that's what um, we want. No, it's Courtney from Maine. I'm, I will not because I want. I want to thank these people. Courtney from Maine, twenty five dollars. Hillary from California, not that Hillary, twenty five dollars. Eileen from Maryland, sixty dollars. Daniel from Florida, twenty five dollars. And Kay Michael from Washington D.C., a hundred dollars. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. That's, that's, enough, people. that's why we're over three hundred dollars. That's all. Well, I took the ultimate Desperate Housewives quiz and I, I did pretty good. Um, I want to know if you guys know other people's stories. So, um, uh -oh. Ricardo, when the net followed Tom to Atlantic City, what did she find out? Uh, wait, what? Remember when the <laughs> followed Tom to Atlantic City? He doesn't. Is, something's going on technically right now. I can't. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll text it to you. Since I have your number. That'd be, a good idea. That'd be great. great. Ricardo doesn't know what happened to his character. <laughs> okay, you know what? I will ask Ricardo. And how about this? How did poor Gabby lose her baby? 
She got drunk and lost it. She was attacked by an intruder. Carlos forced her to get an abortion, or she fell down the stairs running away from an intruder. She got drunk. Okay, she fell down the stairs. You're a fool. Okay, <laughs> how do you not remember your own storyline? No, I was it. Come on, I was playing. Even I knew that. Thank you. Okay, no, yeah, no. fell down the stairs. Now, Tuck, what about you? Do you remember what happened when Lynette followed Tom to Atlantic City? I'm sure your boyfriend would know. Text him quickly. <laughs> Uh, was this on Desperate Housewives? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm getting rid of you. I'm bringing up, maybe Mark Moses. Yeah, some yeah, respect. Sorry, Tuck, you lost Dan. it. Okay, on, Mark, stop. Stop. Mark Moses stopped watching the show after he left. But it's still the same. Still Mark the same cast of characters. What's the question? I won't know, but go ahead. <laughs> Follow Doug Savant to Atlantic City. Do you remember what she discovered? Yes, she yeah. when she got to Atlantic City, yes. she discovered that she discovered that uh, that Doug's character was a crossdresser. Okay, this is not yes and. <laughs> this is actually <laughs> all right. Well, well, wait, Doug, remember the yeah. episode where Doug wore leopard briefs? Oh, ah, yeah. remember that? I'm getting wait, him on now. I do. Hey, <laughs> wait a minute, hey. Doug wore what? Wait. He wore leopard <laughs> briefs. Leopard <laughs> like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do you remember Doug's character's nickname? Uh, no. Oh. What was it? The Big Sleazy. No. No. What was it? It, I really, it was uh, Tripod Tommy. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's, that's, right. that's right. That's, that's right. right. In briefs, yeah. So, Carl, uh, why do you remember that, but not how your pro golf <laughs> was? <laughs> I, I've, all, I've always had, I've been blessed with selective memory. I don't know what to tell you. Something so. stick. It traumatized him. Yeah. Well, Carlos texted me and he asked me to show this clip. So Carlos here we go. Carlos texted me. Ricardo. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you want fantasy? I, I can give you fantasy. <laughs> Come to me, woman. Prepare to be boarded. Please, will you make it past? These things are just chafing. I, uh, I kind of like it. Oh, good. Kill the lights. I'm so sorry. You know, I tried. Mark Cherry said, we're going to put you in a thong next. And I was like, nobody wants to see that nope no. i did yeah <laughs> yeah right here <laughs> you pulled it off but you know like and, and now i'm like a hundred years older and i'm like oh yeah not bad all right i, still have that right. I know <laughs> okay i'm gonna bring back talk and see if these are self-respecting gay man james take a break for a moment um tuck dear hold on i hope you know this answer how many gay people did Carlos beat up? Zero. It's a trick question. The answer is zero. Okay, Tuck, take care. Um, okay. <laughs> I cannot believe the Why are you asking Tuck any because questions? He's gay. <laughs> he doesn't know the show. Ricardo, how many did you beat up? Do you remember? You know, I, I can remember. I, I think there was definitely one or two in the first couple of seasons. There were more than that, but this. The crazier thing was I remember there was fan mail that was sent in that like was so hateful and like so full of like, like we can't believe that, you know, this is who you are. And then I'm like, this is not me. Like, this is the character. That was always a problem with that show. Too. But yeah, I got a, I got a lot of, uh, I got a lot of like fan feedback, negative fan feedback about that. And I was like, I grew up in theater guys. Like what, what? Um. <laughs> I knew you were acting. I didn't hate you. <laughs> you got right. hate mail while Eva was making her daughter run behind the car because she was fat. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. I I remember <laughs> reading that and going, oh, wow. I, that's... I think, Kevin, I think you and I were in the table read and looked at each other when we saw Across, that, oh. that Eva makes her dad run behind the car. We were we were just like, this is never going to work. Um, I did a USA interview speaking out against it. Yep. Yeah. Remember, that, that was hard. That? Yeah. Did you get yeah. in trouble for it with the with the network? 
Not with the network, no. Oh, not for I, that. That's what I love about the show is all of the uh, all of that kind of stuff. Or when Marsha says Marsha says in, in uh, like the second or third or seventh episode, Rex cries when he ejaculates. I mean, <laughs> I mean but that, that's an but, adult male you're making fun of. That's that's funny. Yes, yes. It's not yes. You know, hey, hey, she signed up. She's an actor. She signed up on the job. There was a lot of there was a lot of stuff that was being made fun of back then that there's no way that it could be touched yes. down. I you know, you know. I, mean, I mean, look at like just like you you brought up, you know, how Carlos beat up X number of of, of homosexual right. men within the constructs of that show. It's like you couldn't do that now. Well, you know, I, I mean, yeah. I mean, if it, if it was, you if sound it was, if it was moving, propelling the story forward, you could. Do you know what I mean? But if it if it was just gratuitous, then then that's not gonna that's not gonna be helpful to anyone. I mean, I you can't. know. It definitely, the point of view was that he was wrong to do it. You weren't supposed to be rooting for Carlos. You were thinking sure. that. But, but to bring humor to it, to bring humor to a situation like that nowadays would be very, very faux pas, you know? Uh, yes. Right. That, yeah. I, I, I right. agree with that. Um, by the way, didn't, Ricardo, didn't you play Stanley Kowalski at one point? I, I did. Uh, I did Stanley I Kowalski at, at the Guthrie Theater in Minneapolis. Yeah. I was, I think we were like season six, season seven of Housewives. I, I, and I still work actively in theater. I was, in the past five years, I've been at the National Theater at, uh, oh God, uh, the Geffen in Los Angeles, the Guthrie again, and what's the, what's the off, uh, what's the off-Broadway one? Um, the Motherlode. <laughs> it's right there at 44, the big one, the 40 Signature Theater. I was at the t- Signature. I was saying I I have a question. Did any did any Polish actors get upset that you play Stanley Kowalski? <laughs> well, you, know, um, you know, when you can't find a Polak, you got to grab a Mexican. So. It's in the rule book. Denton, did you play Kowalski too? I also played Stanley Kowalski, but it was a little different. It wasn't quite the Guthrie. It was uh, a small theater in Chicago when I was a kid. Yeah. Well, guess what? We're gonna have a Stanley off. Uh, we're gonna see who remembers our lines better. <clears throat> Carla, I'll, I'll be Blanche. Whoever knows the next line, speak. I did, I did it in 1991. Denton, I didn't ask care. for excuses. <laughs> I asked you, might, you might be better at this, James. <laughs> so now I'm doing a Southern accent, and I know that Doug is best at Southern accents. <laughs> but best Mark Cherry. Yes. Just do it like Mark Cherry. I like all the Williams women, so yeah. She Blanche says, "Why those were a tribute from an admirer of mine." Who was it, Chet Hunley? I don't know. <laughs> he must have had a lot of. He must have had a lot of admiration. Yes, thank you, Ooh. Jane. Then she wow. said, "Look at me now. Would you think it possible that I once was considered to be attractive?" You say, "No." Must have been a long time ago. Hey, Mark, <laughs> you're talking about me, first of all. We're talking about the man. You say your looks are okay. Didn't you guys memorize the <laughs> It was 29 years ago. A lot of things. Okay, let's go around quickly in a circle. Doug Savant, what was your favorite episode? What was your favorite thing to film or favorite moment? Um... God, I don't. I I loved. I, I never had a bad day in my eight years on that show. I was thrilled. Ah, uh, nothing True. specific. Working with the kids. What about the big makeup scene on the street where we think you're going to get divorced and then you don't? Yeah, that was that that was uh, that was that was special. Yeah, because it was you know the end of the show. So yeah, right. Very much so. Yeah, thanks for bringing that one up. That's the, I'll pick that one. Okay, fine. <laughs> Okay, actually, you know what? Wait, I think we have that clip. I think we did, actually. Okay, hold on. Was, as a fan, it was one of my favorite scenes from the oh, show. Thank you. Two two. Podcast, huh? It's very sweet. I really did think we were going to break up. I was like, oh, by the way, spoiler alert. Anyway, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Look, at the end, before I left, our problems looked this big. So I went away. But now, I realized they they only seemed that way because we were so close up against them. And, and, and they were blocking me from seeing how much I love you. Yeah. Aww. 
I've said this many times, and I want to say it here. The, one of the biggest travesties of this show was that Doug Savant didn't win an Emmy. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. And I mean it with – I could not yeah, – you're, you're, you're so kind, and I've, I've never worked came in, show, so. came in as a guest star, which I felt like was crazy, and then you had to sort of earn your way, and, and, and Doug Scavo was – I'm a fan. I'm just saying. You should have won an Emmy. He's the best. He's very generous. Love sure. that. Kevin, what about you? Which bitchy line my, was your favorite say? <laughs> my favorite scene was it was a really small thing for Tuck and I, but it was when um, Terry Hatcher had a guy sneaking out of her house naked, and Tuck and I are sitting on the porch, and like we're kind of facing her house, and we're like drinking or reading the paper, drinking our tea, and we both, it's just like there's no lines. We watch him crawl out of the window naked. And then I just slowly pull my phone up and take a picture and put it back. And like there was no dialogue. And that was one of my favorite moments in the whole thing. But my least favorite was the mob. The mobs, when the mob comes down the street. Oh. And just because it was such a nightmare to shoot. It was like, this is toward the end and they had run out of stories. And like there was, a, there was like 300 people on the street breaking windows and stuff and that was just a nightmare to shoot that's the only reason i didn't like that but we we just had the, at least we did we had so much fun on that set i've never laughed so hard oh. so repeatedly that's nice. it was fun oh. tuck what about you you love the mob full disclosure i was never on desperate housewives <laughs> <laughs> i thought this was the 30 something reunion <laughs> <laughs> My favorite episode was when the plane crashed into Santa's house at the end of the street because they had all of us out there and we didn't know who was going to die in the mid-season cliffhanger, but whoever got was whoever was in the house was going to die. <laughs> Kevin and I were over to the side eating bonbons. I thought, we're safe. And then over a megaphone, the director says, uh, Tuck, can you move behind Santa's house, please? And I thought, no. <laughs> <Is> that <laughs> They kept moving us around to see, and I thought, well, this has been fun, guys. Um, but Wait, uh, you, you, did, you really didn't know when you were filming who was going to be alive or not? No, we didn't know who was in the house. We didn't know who was going to perish. And, um, you know, there could be ancillary characters around. You know, you didn't want to be stuck behind the house because you knew the plane was going to run into the house. So there were, you know, those mid, they started doing these mid-season cliffhangers like the tornado, Bob, the Santa's house being destroyed, and you never really knew what your fate was going to be. Wow, so you didn't know if you were going to have a steady job. You didn't know if you were going to come back. Well, we, Tuck and I were still guests at that time, I, I'm pretty sure. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah that was early. We were guests for we were guests for a long time. And we, it took us a lot longer to earn our stripes than it did Doug Savant. But similar to what happened to Doug, I remember um, in the I don't know the second or third season we were there. Mark said to, to my reps, um, "Play ball with us, and I and I promise next season we'll we'll make him series regulars." And and he lived up to that. And that yeah, really he did. He so. did. He was. He was definitely a man of his word when it came to that stuff. If he yeah, said, I'm going to take care that. of you, he did. Yeah. Mark Cherry said that? He yeah. did. Yeah. And he just totally, he lost his southern accent at that point? <laughs> and it's just sounded totally different. Huh? This is why straight men should never play gay men on television. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Sorry, what? Kevin. Yeah. There I'm he is. And Doug. <laughs> There. All busted. Okay, so hold on. <laughs> busted. Okay, Ricardo, what was your? By the way, I love the sassy spiral staircase. Is that just there for show? Or does it actually lead somewhere? I just, it's a rental. <laughs> you know. Okay, what was your favorite moment? I know you don't remember much of the show, but in your memory, what did you enjoy? Um, let's see. I can. The kids running behind the car. The, no. Um, <laughs> horrible. I, you know, I, I, my, my favorite, my favorite guest star, although I didn't get to work with her, was uh, Carol Burnett. Um, I got to see her work, and that was something that was truly incredible. Mm -hmm. At her age, to still be moving around as, 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 as spry as she was, and to show up on set ready to go, not just knowing her lines, but, but knowing everyone else's lines, was a testament to what the industry used to be. And it was very much more theatrical than anything else. Um, let's see. 
I what I enjoy doing more than anything else, and I don't think I've ever voiced this to these guys, was getting to set early before my stuff would shoot and getting to watch other people's stuff get shot and watching them and watching their process and watching all the 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 jokes and the banter and the mistakes and the miscues and everything. Because for me, Housewives was very much a um, it was very much an education those first few years. You know, I, I, had, I had only gotten out of my graduate program for theater in 2000. This was in 2004. So those first wow. few seasons were really a big learning curve for me, you know? Um, so that was a real joy. And then just to be on set every day working with probably the most fabulous crew I've ever had the chance or opportunity to work with. I mean, I still keep in touch with a lot of the crew people today. Uh, I consider them very close friends and, um, you know, I, it, it was very much, it was a family in that, in that mm -hmm. sense. So uh, that's the thing that, that was most important and, and made the most impression upon me in my time during that, you know, my stuff, there was a fried chicken scene where Eva was eating fried chicken. And, um, I thought that was kind of funny. So <laughs> did you guys have the same crew basically for the whole eight years? Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. DPs came through. We rotated. Some DPs got fired, and you know, mm -hmm. and came and went. But uh, yeah, basically. With the with the writers, did you ever have any <clears throat> any say in your character or development, or did they listen to ideas or anything, or did you just do this do the script as as it was written? In my in my my experience, they were more open to changes than any other group of writers I've I've worked with. Um, uh, and you know, in fact, John Pardee of John and Joey texted me why and is watching now. So we say hi to our uh, all those great writers who who put really ridiculously funny things in our mouths from Alexander yeah. Cunningham to uh, to mark and and uh uh, uh, be, uh i just the bands kevin Ed, and who helped help me out guys matt barry matt oh matt i love matt, it this is so long matt, well, I said mark cherry once i said hey are you open to some ideas for my character and he said i'll set up a meeting for you so he arranged for me to have lunch with marco panette and so mark was and, up, and we ate lunch and i told him a couple ideas and he said Okay, I need you to tell me again because I actually like them. <laughs> and Our that you know, the, the the flipper story where I try to flip Ricardo came from one of the ideas that we talked about at that lunch. So yeah, they, they were really open. They were open to it, and sometimes it worked out. Well, I, and, uh, I just, Bob Daly, Bob Daly, Bob Daly, Bob Daly. Oh, yeah. His wife Janet was she's phenomenal. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. Hey, Ricardo, I just texted you a donation that maybe you'll remember this person. Take a look at your phone. Uh-oh. Okay. Hold <laughs> it. Yes, uh, Di Diana Wilson, $50, who worked in our production office for Desperate Housewives all eight seasons and says that it was the best show I've ever worked on, and these guys were a big part of it, so kind and fun. And everybody was family. Please tell them all I said hi. And Ricardo is the most awesome of them all. <laughs> <laughs> Who added that? That was added later on. Okay, Mark, <laughs> what was your favorite part of doing the show? Which which person that you murdered? <laughs> uh, which person? Yeah. What I always got from everybody was, um, you're the guy who murdered his wife. And I go, no, no, I murdered her murderer with a blender. But um, I got Correct. always murder, murder your wife. But I mean, there were so many great scenes and uh, Mark, you know, did a great, I mean, I think from the beginning, digging up the pool in your pajamas. I thought that was just fantastic visual that said so many things. Um, and I got to work with a lot of different actors in the show because I never had a spouse, obviously. <laughs> much people hated me. But I got to work with Richard Roundtree for a while, which, you know, was fantastic. Shaft, they got to work with Shaft and I got to work with... Uh, Almost everybody a little bit on the show, a little more with Terry sometimes, sometimes with Jamie. But it was just, it was a great ride. And I sort of went away and I got to come back season seven. Mm -hmm. So I loved it. And Mark, Mark did a great job with it. Denton, you know, you know, by the way, spoiler alert for anybody watching, spoiler alert. <laughs> but let me just say, James, did you know what was going to happen to your character? Because I certainly did not know it was going to happen and I'm still recovering. It's funny. Well, thank you. I got lucky, uh, I, I think. 
Mark called me in um, with about five episodes ago and said the network wants to do something big um, before the finale because everybody knew the finale would be big. We want to kill somebody. We can't kill any of the women. So we think we're going to kill you. Wow. Um, how do you feel about it? Which I thought was very respectful because I hadn't yeah. seen it. Um, and um, and it worked out great for me because I kind of got a little bit of a send off. I get to do the talk show circuit and talk about Delfino's exit. And and I still came back as a ghost in the final episode. So yeah. it's funny because most of us guys joked about trying to stay alive for eight years. <laughs> um, and so I made it till I think there were four episodes to go. But I mentioned Matt Berry because he wrote that episode. And um, we actually got together and we talked about that. I thought it was a beautifully done sequence where when the bullet leaves the gun, between the gun and when it hits my chest, Delfino's life flashes before your eyes. And yes. flashes back from the pilot all the way to see the end of season eight. And it was a really beautifully done thing. And Terry was so heartbreaking as I lay there, you know, bleeding out in her in her lap. So I thought they did a great job with it. And I was I, I felt fortunate that I got a little bit of a send-off. My favorite episodes were taking Mark Moses out to the quarry and uh, threatening to kill him in season one. That was a good one. And he kind of talked his way out of it. Um, that was a really, really fun episode when you thought Delfino was going to kill Paul. Um, and so I like working with the guys. Ricardo moved in with me for a while. Um, All right. He lived in Delfino's house. We were peanut butter and jelly for a little while. That's, That's right. Baby. That's yeah. right. So, uh, it was that, that was the fun stuff for me because I rarely got to do scenes with those guys. Here's one of your, what was it voted the most romantic scene ever? Oh, right. Yeah, the, with, uh, with Terry, Terry and James. Yeah. For, what it's worth, for what so it's worth. I was looking for clips. I mean, I found this was like the one that was like voted the most popular as far as romantic. So, so sorry, Doug. All we can pray for is rescue. Mike, I twisted my ankle. Good. Because now I get to do this. <laughs> you know the funny thing about that, guys? It was a sweet little scene, but I thought, why do I sound so terrible? It was looped because that stream running behind us. <laughs> <laughs> Good, because now I get to do this was said you know, like in an audio studio a year later. <laughs> I thought it was going to be that scene where Terry's lying in the bushes and I've seen her naked, you know, like out of her house. And then that at the end of the episode, it was called, Who's That Woman? In the end of the episode, I walk her to the door and she says, thank you for not looking. And I say, well, I got to admit, I, I kind of took a peek and for what it's worth, wow. <laughs> and I walked away and it was the first Mike Susan moment where we realized they were going to date. And, and I love that episode. Yeah, but you were you were hooking up with uh, Nicolette Sheridan. Oh, I got I had a whole season with Dana Delaney. I was really lucky. You were a player. <laughs> yeah, I had a whole season with Dana Nicolette. Uh, when I woke up from my coma, Nicolette was straddling me in the hospital. <laughs> so, and then, but then later in a courtroom, she hated me in real life. So I don't know. Oh, oh. It was always hot. All right, look, guy. The end of the story is this: we have to. We've done now the two Desperate Housewives reunions. We now have to have one with the actual ladies. So we're gonna bring everybody you back. You mean with all of them? No, with you both together. Yeah, because I feel like I wanted. I want to talk to the couple. So the next time we see you, I want you all in couples. So let's work on that. Tuck, of course, Tuck and Kevin, you've already been in a couple, but maybe there was one episode with a three-way. We'll bring that person in. <laughs> that was. <laughs> with, uh, Bob, with Bob Newhart, there was a scene. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin's clapping. Um, all right, I guess that's it. You guys have been so sweet. Thank you so much. Um, tomorrow we have, of course, we have a play every Saturday at two p.m. We're doing um tomorrow is um what's what's the name uh, of the play? Well, Little Dog Laugh. We're the Little Dog Laugh. Yeah. And then tomorrow night is Cheetah Rivera, and then we have Star Trek Voyager next week. Um, we have lots coming up. So keep donating. We love it. Thank you guys so much for being here. Um, right, let's let's go off and and we'll uh, we'll, we'll bring on. You. Thank, you. thank you for doing right, this. Right. Great, great. Yeah, thank you for having us. Hey, by the way, uh, Denton, I still have your uh, turf from the Super Bowl. <laughs> it's oh, from uh, the Colts end zone. Oh, I just wanted you. to show you that. I still, I'm holding it for you in case you want it back. It's okay, when the Saints, the Saints beat the Colts in the Super Bowl. I don't know if you remember it. So I, long story. I, I, I completely slipped my mind. Yeah, yeah, I still have it for you. If you, I'm just make sure you watch. Uh, are we all going to watch Peyton Manning and Tom Brady play golf on Sunday. It's Sunday, I have it recorded. <laughs> 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 on your own time. <laughs>
time. <laughs> okay. Is this your dime? I think for one. On your own thing, time. I know well, this is their dime. Sorry, I, I didn't realize you were paying for it. Okay, I'm gonna oh, play the studio credits. I'm gonna close out with some Sondheim. Since, yeah, thanks uh, everyone. Everything is. Thank you for having us, Seth and James. Thank you. Donate to the Donate to the Actors Fund. Absolutely. Thank you.